The first step for a successful World War III Victory Garden is to do the planning. So let's get planning so we can get planting. I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan. And we are so excited about what's happening with this challenge. We have had a lot of great responses to this World War III Victory Garden Challenge. And we want to show some of those to you. This is, this is really exciting to see people getting with it and getting going. And if you want to participate in that, if you want to share some of your insights, your wisdom, um, pictures, videos, whatever it is, Connect with us on our contact page at theprovidentprepper.org. And whether you are a seasoned gardener or you've never planted a seed in your life, we invite you to join this journey with us as we help to cre increase the food security all around us during these more challenging times. Yeah. Let's talk about the resources that are available to you. Some of them are absolutely free. This is a seed catalog and there are all kinds of different seed catalogs out there. But one of the things that I really like about um, the better seed catalogs is that they have little areas on them where they talk about, like this one is for tomatillo and husk cherries. They'll talk about exactly how you need to grow these and the conditions and just give you all kinds of tips and yet it's just free. Um, videos online and um, some of the posts online, they're, they're a great resource. Be careful because just somebody says that they know what they're talking about doesn't mean that they really do. But So go to some really good sources. Um, I've got all kinds of gardening books and some of which I've purchased and some I've bought at garage sales or thrift stores, but I'm always collecting gardening books. And these are only a few of my gardening books, yeah. but there are, <laughs> I know it's, it's an addiction, but there are a lot of them out there. But let me tell you, this is one of my very favorite. It's called Gaia's Garden. And it's all about, um, it's by Tom Henning, Hemingway and it's all about creating a food forest and being able to grow things sustainably using permaculture methods. And this one is, is fantastic, and I really like that one. But this um, Jadam gardening, organic gardening, is a new one to me, and it's another one that I am super excited to have because, okay, we all get pests in our garden, right? And they've got huge pictures of the pests and kind of exactly what you need to do to take care of them. And I've just been super impressed with this book. So it's one of my very new favorites. Um, one of the other things, so you know our challenge, right? So we have challenged ourselves from the month of July through October this year that we're only going to um, eat produce out of our garden. We're not gonna purchase any produce. And so that's kind of fun, but so I have to get my seeds started and we are gonna use this for our challenge. This is the survival garden seeds and I'm super impressed with the variety of seeds that they have in here and the price because for those of you that are out shopping for seed packets, um, there's a hundred of them in here and it's only a hundred dollars. And if you use the promo code Provident Prepper, it, you'll save 10%. So um, this is one way to go. It's not the only way to go, but this is what we're gonna use this year because I'm so excited. But um, this is one of the seed packets and this is asparagus. Asparagus is a perennial plant, so it grows back year after year after year. So that is really important in a survival garden. But one of the things I really like about survival garden seeds is that on the back, they tell you exactly what you need to know to be successful in growing these. In, so, including how you can save seeds so that you can grow perpetually. Right. Well, uh, to me, that's really cool. Because these are all heirloom seeds. So theoretically, this should be all you ever have to buy for these if you save the seeds correctly. But so for this asparagus, one of the things it tells me to do is to soak the seeds before planting because they have a little bit of a trouble with germination. And so that's really helpful. Another thing that I have had to do was um, I put this in my refrigerator because these milkweed seeds that I got from them, which I'm totally excited about, um, need cold stratification for a little while before. So this is the envelope that they actually came in. And on this envelope, I put the date that I put them in the refrigerator and how long they needed to stay there before I could plant them. So some of these things are all things that you need to know in your gardening. Um, one of the things is that there's a summer or there's a spring, summer, and fall garden. So many people only think you can grow in the summer, right? Yeah. So not true. All of these seeds here 
are seeds that are for my spring garden, which I will be planting like this. And this is usually how I, I do it, but we'll talk about that in another video. The planning is just so very important. And if you look back here, we, I'm, I'm huge because all winter long, I dream about my garden. So I've got plans from year past. Um, and I love the storyboard thing. You might not be able to see this really well, but it's a huge piece of, um, poster board that I sketch out my garden and then I can make notes all over it and I kind of go crazy with all the different things that I want to put in it but by planning ahead I'm able to um, just plan better just have a better final result but quite frankly I never quite stick to my plan perfectly there's and always the, something and that's the nature of plans right you make a plan and there's always adjustments that you make along the way and that's perfectly fine so you know, if, if it changes a little bit, it's probably for the better. Yeah. So we also encourage you to include the young people in your life, whether it's your children or your grandchildren or your neighbor's kids. Children love gardening. So one of the things that our grandchildren did was draw these pictures of things that they want to grow in the garden this year because you can get kids to eat almost anything if they've grown it in the garden. It's so exciting. Speaking of which, when we were planning about how much we want to grow and what we want to grow this year, Benjamin, who is 16, said, I just want to grow berries. Let's just grow more berries because what does he like to eat? He loves berries. The berries. And we, Any kind of yeah, berry. We've got um, black raspberries, yellow raspberries, red raspberries, strawberries, um, honey berries. We've got so many different berries and you'd like us to plant more berries. And so, as, as soon as he could walk, he was out yeah. harvesting the raspberries. Any kind of berry, he would just chow him down he'd come in with his face covered with berries but what a wonderful sight yeah it's a beautiful lesson so make sure that you're including those young people in your lives so um in your planning the first thing that we need to do is select a good location right and that location should be able to get at least six to eight hours of sun for most of the crops some of the crops like your greens you don't need quite that much sun um, but that's important and you need access to water in fact we did a video about this Yes, we, we actually, Chris at City Prepping reached out to us and said, hey, I'm planning my new garden at my new house and I need a little help kind of getting it figured out. And so um, we'd encourage you to go there. We'll leave a link in the description so that you can check out that video and uh, kind of go through that process that we went through with Chris. Great, great time. Yeah, so with site location, that's, that's a great way to plan. Um, and then determine the size of your garden don't start too big and overwhelm yourself right this year is kind of important i think we need to grow as much as we can but take into account the amount of people you're growing for the time that you have you may need to use easier gardening method methods than um like say a traditional traditional garden um, your crop selection like we talked about with benjamin grow the crops that you really love if there is something that comes in this seed packet that you don't like don't grow it Give the, give the seed to somebody else, right? Um, then, then succession crops. We talked just a little bit about that. Make sure you're growing in the spring, summer, and the fall so that you can utilize that entire growing season because it's totally possible. And then about the amounts to grow. Now, you can find little tables all over the internet that will tell you how much you should grow. And these numbers that I'm gonna talk about are for one person. And they are not right for our family. Right. right. This is somebody's estimate. But if you're growing, yeah. like if you love tomatoes and you eat so many tomatoes, well, you're going to be growing something less of something else because you can't eat everything. One of the things that they tell me to grow here is okra, six feet for one person and 10 feet if I'm going to preserve it in any way. I don't eat okra. I'm not going to grow okra. Is that bad? No. It just right. means, and I'll probably actually grow some this year because I have some okra seeds that came in here and I would like for my children to try them and maybe I should try it again, but I'm not growing six feet of them, right? Um, another thing it says for onions, five feet of onions or 30 feet if you are going to preserve any. Well, that's probably not enough for us. We eat a lot of onions, so... Um, Again, the whole message here is, yeah, these are guides. These are estimates. 
but do your own thing. Make your own plan based on what you will eat and what's exciting for you. Yeah, and John had an interesting idea this year about the chart. We've done this in years past, but in our planning, this came up again. Yeah, and that is um, the family doesn't like chard every day. I, I like chard. Yeah, twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah, I could probably eat it four times a week, but our bunnies and our chickens love it. And that's a great way to supplement their feed to reduce the amount that we have to give them if we go out each day and just harvest some of that that grows prolifically and give it to them. And that's another way to be more sustainable. Yeah, and so much more nutritious for the animals, right? And gives them a better lifestyle. So I think yeah. that's a really good idea. So that being said, let's go ahead and take you to see some of the planning that our friends have done. So check this out. Hey, Pro Water Preppers, it's Jonathan, and we are here this morning. It's kind of a cool morning, but it's time to get started with gardening. And this is all part of our World War III uh, Victory Garden Challenge. And we are excited to have Rob and Amanda here with us to talk about what they want to do with their yard. This is pretty exciting. This is the time to get going on your garden. So tell us about what you have planned. Well, right now we just have four garden beds and we've had great success with them for a couple of years and really come to love gardening. But now we just want to expand. We really want the ability to be able to grow more food and not just to grow it, but have the experience and know-how to grow it in case one day we don't have another option. Great plan. So what, what do you have in mind? What's, what's gonna happen here? Tell us kind of what it has been and what it's becoming. Well, we don't have a super large yard. Our total uh, lot size is a little less than a quarter of an acre, but we're gonna try to maximize every square inch of it that we can to grow as much food as we can. So we're gonna be taking this entire area back here and we're gonna be filling it with garden beds that we're planning to plant all of our favorite fruits and vegetables in. Okay, what, what does that include? What kinds of things are you excited to plant? Well, the number one and two spots always go to tomatoes and peppers. Um, we love making and canning our own salsa, and we've been able to enjoy that homemade canned salsa all winter, even though we don't have an active garden. Um, this year we're expanding and doing raspberries and strawberries. We're gonna try things we've never tried before. We're gonna try corn and potatoes and, just all sorts of stuff. We're really excited to see what we can do this year. Um, one thing I've wanted to really add to the garden this year is to make sure I do lots of flowers to attract those pollinators. Um, and so the yeah. kids are really excited to help me do our first ever cut flower garden. Um, and their plan is if they can work hard and make it successful, um, they want to make up bouquets to sell to our friends and neighbors. What a great business experience for kids to, to not only learn how to work, but to, to work the ground and to run a business. That's exciting. Now, I think you mentioned you also wanted to do some vertical gardening. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we've got, because we have such limited space, um, we've, we've in the past grown things like zucchini or squash, but the problem with those plants is that they take up so much space. They spread out horizontally, and we could have used that space to grow more tomatoes or other things like that, but we're hesitant to use that much space just for for zucchini or whatever it happens to be. So this year we're gonna try something new that we've never done before. We're gonna be putting up arches in between some of our garden beds to let the zucchini and the squash and those types of plants grow vertically so that we can still have the ground space for the other, the other plants as well. Well, that's exciting. So you're really gonna try and maximize this. We're now over in the southwest portion of the backyard. Um, tell us what you've got going here. There, there are some existing beds. Yes. Tell us what else you've got going, if these will stay or if these will go. So um, we're, we're gonna keep these three existing beds and build this way into the yard with more beds. Okay. Um, you can see here, we've already even started, um, started our seeds for some of them this year with winter sowing. Nice. And it's something I did for the first time last year that did really well. I was really surprised. And actually this, this kale you can see from last year is stuff I started from seed in the milk jugs. So now we're moving over a little bit to the east. Tell us a little more about what you have in mind for the rest of this area. Yeah, we, as you can see, we've got all this open space in our backyard. Um, that doesn't really get utilized. Our kids prefer to play in the front yard and it just takes up a lot of water trying to keep this grass green. So we're gonna put um, 
10, 10 by four foot beds, two here, two there, and then make them parallel this way so that they'll match up and we can do those arches like Rob was talking about to grow vertically. Now we've moved over more to the north side of the yard and tell us about what you have planned here. You've got, looks like a fruit tree yes. here. I assume that will stay in because yes. it's at we've least got well the, on its way. We've got the existing nectarine tree, which last year we're, it's gonna stay because last year I think we canned, um, what, like 20 quarts of nectarines, mm -hmm. which have been so fun to enjoy throughout the winter. Um, and then, like I said, we've got to keep the trampoline for the kids because they, that's their big thing that they love to do. But we're going to move it here, which will open up now all this side of the yard to do a raspberry patch um, and cut flowers. Now your sprinkling system that you have existing, can you still use part of that, some of that? Are you going to use the same lines to water? How's that going to work? We haven't figured it out completely yet, but they do make retrofit kits where you can take existing sprinklers and convert them to drip lines. So we're planning to just take that water that right now is sprinkling water all over our yard. We're just going to retrofit all of those, or most of those anyways, into drip lines and run them all through each of our garden beds, run them along the raspberries on the north side here. Um, it'll be nice to not have to get out and manually water it all the time. It'll just come on on the timer. And I, I'm guessing you're going to save a huge amount of water. I think so. I uh, think right now it takes, as you guys know, it takes a ton of water to keep grass green. Yeah. So uh, we're going to repurpose that water and instead of grass that our dog poops on, we're just going to be able to use that to uh, water food that we're going to eat and hopefully our dog won't poop on that. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, and especially we're experiencing a long-term drought here. I mean, we've, we've had, except for one year, we've had many years of drought. So that is moving in a good direction, actually using less water and producing great food. Um, and did you say you're gonna use drip system? Drip systems. Yeah. That's Very actually nice. been one of our concerns as well. Because we do live in a desert, we, uh, my conscience has a hard time watering our lawn and seeing our sprinklers watering our lawn for so long. Uh, every week, we love to get rid of that, at least as much of it as we can to be, become productive ground, uh, productive use of water that will allow us to eat from it. So with this big garden that we're putting in, it's going to require obviously a lot of plants. And we do buy some plants from our nursery, but to do that for as big of a scale as we're doing would be really expensive. So I'm trying to start as much stuff as I can by seed this year. And as you can see, I've got six trays, each with 72 slots that I've already started seeds indoors with. And I feel like sometimes it's hard to find the space to grow indoors or you feel like you don't have the space. Well, this is just a lifetime folding table and we're here in our baby's room slash guest room. And yeah, it might be a little bit of a pain for the next six to eight weeks before these can go outside, but we're able to grow so much good stuff indoors and give it a head start to put out in the garden. We are so excited to be here with Anthony and Samantha and one of their little ones. <laughs> and this is all part of our World War III Victory Garden Challenge. And, and they've decided they're gonna jump in on this. And so tell us a little bit about who you are and what's going on in your world and your plans. Um, this is just really exciting because you've got some good things going on. So we just moved in actually a couple months ago, kind of in the middle of winter. Uh, we're a family of six and our goal is just to be more self-sufficient and to make as much of our own of everything that we can. Yep. Cool. And a little bit about the property. It's about two acres. Um, we still have a lot to build on it because we moved a lot in of during plans. winter. <laughs> and so we're going to try to go through and get a greenhouse going and more garden boxes more built. More garden boxes. So you've got four here. Yeah, we're and then, lucky to have those. And where do you want to put, you're going to put in four more, is that what I understood? Yeah. yeah we're Tell gonna, us a little bit about that. We're going to basically double up what we have here and do four more and then add some different areas around the property for other things like berry bushes and other things. We've got some animals going. We found some chickens for free up the canyon, which is kind of funny. <laughs> there we go. But we, so we've got started with that. We've got rabbits and we just got some baby goats. Hopefully we can start doing some milk from them and just getting everything we can 
from ourselves. Okay. And not need the grocery store is if we don't have to. Okay. We have about 20 other chicks going to that we just oh, yeah. got in. So chicken math is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you kind of alluded to this, but what's driving all this? What what is it that's that is this hobby? Is it um, what is it that drives this? Yeah, so the, the whole goal is to try to be self-sufficient and not have to get anything from the store. So tell us a little bit about the crops that you think are most important, the things that you want to grow, um, that your family will eat. Uh, just for curiosity, what, what is it that uh, is going to grow in these garden beds? So we have kids aged from one year old to uh, 12 years old is our oldest. Have to think about that for a minute. And they also range in from kids that will eat everything and a super picky eater. So okay. what we've done is we sat down one night and just kind of asked all of our kids, so what's your favorite food and what can we grow in the garden? And our little kids had lots of ideas. Our daughter loves carrots and peas and she actually loves turnips, which I'm interesting happy that's a, about that's not usual for, yeah. a, for a child but but our really picky child he's like well I don't like anything from the garden and so I said okay, okay well what's your favorite food to eat and his answer was spaghetti and potato chips I'm like okay we can grow tomatoes and make our own spaghetti sauce there we go and we can grow potatoes and make our own potato chips so there we go go from there and just try to figure that out for each kid what they like and Yep. Between all of us, we kind of like a bit of everything. Over here, close to the house, right on the south side of the house, we have these little garden beds. Tell us a, a little bit about what they are and uh, what your plans are for those. So these came with the house, obviously, and it looks like there's lots of flowers planted in there, which I love flowers. But I think my plan is going to be to relocate the flowers if possible and do herbs since this is right next to our kitchen door. That so my dream has always been to have some herbs to just come out and snip some off and use it for cooking if we can. So I think that's the plan with these for now. That should work out really well. This is a great place just outside your door that you can yeah. grab some things real quick. Yeah. Nice. Hey, Provident Preppers, this is Ryan. Uh, I'm a gardener out of Southeastern Virginia. We're in zone 8A, 7B, we're kind of on the border of those two planting zones. So our uh, last frost date for the spring is going to be early April. Um, last I checked, I think it was April 11th. <clears throat> so that's kind of where, where I'm aiming to get planting a lot, of, a lot of things in the ground. So this is middle of March now, so we're about a month away from that time. But uh, preparation to start planting, I've been, I've been working on things going all the way back into about January. Um, and I just wanted to show you the garden right now is not not too much to look at, but it's outside there and I've got uh, 2,500 square feet. I do a traditional row uh, row style in ground plot and I uh, just got that load of compost delivered and it's covered in weeds out there now. So I'm getting ready to uh, <clears throat> getting ready to spread that compost out to kind of help smother and kill those weeds down. Those are all winter weeds, so they'll, they won't be growing again once they're dead. Um, they're not gonna grow once it starts to warm up. So I'm gonna get that compost spread, get that tilled in, and uh, be ready to plant. And I'll get my rows raked up together and be ready to plant uh, with, within a month. I've got it all fenced in out there to protect from, from critters. I've got a lot of deer and, and raccoons out here uh, that like to get in it. So that's pretty much my plot, uh, 2,500 square feet. I'm uh, producing well over a thousand pounds of food out of that plot year after year. So that's a, that's a tremendous amount of food. And I am storing up, I, I, I found the Provident Pepper Channel within the last six months and I've learned a lot from them on food storage. So I've stored up some rice and wheat and oats and a lot of dry goods. <clears throat> but having a garden helps you have renewable food year after year. Um, you know, so our primary grains, if things were to, to get bad um, and we had to rely solely off what we could produce and what we have stored, um, the rice and the, the oats and the wheat, those would be kind of a luxury thing. And um, but I could I can grow plenty of corn and have corn year round and potatoes and beans. I can grow 
grow that year after year. And so another thing I've been doing is getting my seeds set, set up. Um, I keep these in the refrigerator and they're all in Ziploc bags inside of their packets. So I like to grow all heirloom seeds. I've got a whole variety here. Um, I get to plant two seasons here. So we have a long growing season. So I plant in the spring and in the fall. So I've got, uh, you know, cool season and warm season crops here. Everything is heirloom and I've, and I've been trying to, to save my own seed. If you see within this packet here, these brown, these brown paper packs, these are seeds that I've saved myself. And of course I've got a lot that are, that are from, from companies. <clears throat> so I try to grow all heirloom. So, so for the purpose of being able to save seed and have that same crop coming back year after year. Um, a lot of the heirloom types, you can't really save seed with them because they've been cross pollinated from, from two different parent plants. So if you were to save the seed, what you grow out of that seed won't be true to what you planted the year prior. Um, so heirloom seeds grow true year to year. So there you can save those seeds. And so that's what I've been doing with my seeds. Another thing I've been doing in preparation is uh, turn my dining room into a makeshift nursery. So I've just got some simple, some simple shop lights here. I put three to cover over a, a flat equally. So everything's getting equal light, but peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, all those things require a little bit of a head start to get a good long uh, production through the season. So I've got grow lights all set up in here, just temporary on books and boxes to, so once they're all done, I can clean all this out and we can, we can have, uh, have dinners in here again, <clears throat> but that's pretty much what I've been doing, getting ready to plant, making sure I've got all my seeds that I need, um, getting my stuff that requires an early start going and, um, getting my ground ready with, with, with tilling and getting my rows prepared and getting that compost worked in to add some to add some new life to that dirt out there. This has been so much fun. I hope that you have enjoyed this, seeing what other people are doing and that people are making a difference. They're jumping in with both feet and doing this. So, uh, and recognize that there's not just one way to do things, but um, hopefully we've given you some ideas and some ways to help you be successful. Now, one thing I wanted to also say was that um, I think year round with our garden because we plant a lot of carrots and beets and then come fall, we cover those with leaves, with bags of leaves so that they're insulated and we harvest them clear through the winter. So it doesn't just have to be limited to spring, summer and fall, but we harvest all year long and think what a difference that can make to have that produce go through the winter until you're ready to plant again. In fact, so Sunday dinner, I needed carrots for my soup and I went out to the garden and I dug up a few carrots and chopped them up and put in there and it is March, right? It's, it's almost the middle of March. And so some of these methods are a great way to be able to just extend the season. Absolutely. So question of the day, what are you planning for your garden? And what are you going to plant? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.